All right, well, anyway, as I was saying, this is a game about programming computers, and I figured I might be able to do that reasonably well. I don't know, so I figured I might as well play it, commentate the shit out of it, and talk about way more interesting things, well, not interesting, way less interesting things than you would ever care to know, so I can be like, oh, well, this is going to be using the stack data structure and shit like that or whatever. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, first I need to select my employee ID. I think I'm going to be, uh, this one, the red-haired girl. That looks just like me, apparently. I am apparently a red-haired girl who has a little bit of a two-faced symptom going on there. And, yeah. That's all I was going to say about it. I guess I look like Felicia Day. That's what the other thing I was going to say. Cool. Welcome to your first day. Well, I guess I don't need a voice act. There already is a voice actor who's going... Bruh, bruh, bruh. First job will be here. Upper right side. Remember, you can always ask me for help. Drag commands in this area to build a program. You should tell your worker to grab each thing from the inbox and drop it into the outbox. Now, I've already played this, so I'm just going to step through exactly what I did the first time I played through the game. Which was first I did inbox and outbox. I put one item on there. And then everyone yelled at me and I was sad. The next thing I did was I did inbox three times and then I did outbox to see what would happen. This did not work, as you can see. I just chucked everything on the floor. So, <laughs> part of the difficulty of this game is kind of learning, like, this isn't... It's like a weird sort of programming language. I don't really know how to describe it. But, uh, suffice it to say, you basically have, like, this stream of input and you have this queue of output. And you just pull everything off one bite at a time. And the output, you you can't manipulate it after you put something on there. It's a, it's is immu well, I mean, it's not immutable, but uh, it has, it's a queue with only the end queue instruction defined, if you want to describe it that way. <laughs> Looks like you made it this far. Congratulations on your promotion. Most people stress out and quit before making it this far. But I can tell you have a bright future in inbox slash outbox management. Here is your new assignment. So... Now we get looping constructs, so you throw down a jump statement and then you can decide whether you're going to jump ahead or you're going to jump back and you can decide how far you want to jump in either direction. So that's all there is to say about that. It's looping, so it's the construct that which we do almost all of our programming from now on. Now, we don't need this. If we wanted to, we could just construct a million inbox outbox sequences until that works. But this way is considerably easier, so that's what we're going to do. I believe that as this game progresses, the idea behind it is that we're going to want to... I think we graded on how efficient our program is by how many lines of code we end up using. So, this is the optimal solution for this level, I believe. I don't think that there's... unless there's some weird way in this game that this game works that I don't know about. I think that's probably the best that you can do is that just little four-line, three-line pro program. All right, off to copy floor, which is about copying things to local variables. Oh no, the inbox compare system is completely broken, but that doesn't mean we get to take a break from work. Ignore the inbox for now and just send the following three letters to the outbox. B U G. The facilities manager staff has placed some items over on the floor if they're the only way you can pick them up. So we have copy from, which is an instruction that overwrites whatever value we're currently holding with whatever value we gra grab from memory, basically. So, we're gonna grab something from the inbox, then we're gonna copy from B into that, then put it on the outbox. Now, we talked about looping earlier, we're not gonna be able to do that, because we can't control which parameter goes into the copy from argument. So, copy from U, and then send that to the outbox. Then we'll copy from... What is he saying? He's got an exclamation point. Oh, okay. That's just, I can ask him for help. So, now we'll copy from G. And that's all we need to do for this one, and send it into the outbox. This should work. So, it goes over to B. Yep, okay, this worked out perfectly. So, in effect, that's the other data structure that I know of in this game, is we have... sort of memory. We have, like, this array of variables. I don't really know how to describe it, but we basically have, like, a bunch of local memory that we can mess around with, too. Which is, like, really, really common in programming languages. You have input, output, and memory. That's more or less a little 90% of what you have available to you. The conveyor system is fixed. And just in time for you to get to work. The data won't collate itself. 
Grab the first two things from the inbox and drop them into the outbox in reverse order. Repeat until the inbox is empty. Hello, DC Rocker. You got a new command. Feel free to copy two wherever you like on the carpet. It'll be cleaned later. Cool. So now we have three temporary variables, which we can copy to and copy from. So the way to do this, I, again, already figured this out once. But soon, I think after this level, I stopped playing the game because I was like, I'm going to stream this. I don't want to just beat the whole game and be like, here's how you do it and make like an, a, a, a not, not like a let's play, but just a straight up walkthrough at that point. <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to grab this first variable. We're going to copy it into memory just in one spot. Then we're going to go back, grab the second variable, send that to the output. Then we're going to grab from local memory the variable that we first put in there, and then we'll send that to the outbox. Then we loop. If you didn't understand that, I think they're going to get worse. Oh, you can't copy from an empty tile. Oh, da da da. Okay, I did I did copy from empty to copy to. So we'll get rid of this copy from instruction and say copy to. So we're we're writing and then we're reading. So we copied in the four. We send the seven over to the output and then we just uh, pull a copy of four and then put it on the belt. And now we can overwrite zero as much as we want. Because after we put it on the conveyor belt, we never really care about that value again. Hello, DZ Rocker. How you doing? So we'll overwrite that with a four, and let's just speed it up. As you can see, that worked out perfectly. All right. Now we're entering unknown territory here. So here's hoping that I know how to program. Coffee time. Can do. Year five. I've been working for five years, apparently. Oh, a cutscene. Cool. Um... Is there anything more to the cutscene? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> Regions of the city continue to experience power failure. Local authorities are investigating. That's it. Well, it wouldn't be a World of Goo game without some weird, like, scary... Not World of Goo, but whoever made the World of Goo games. It wouldn't be like them if they didn't have some weird, like, scary dystopian plot going on in the background. It's sort of like their, um... What was it? The one where you played as, like, a fireplace owner or something? I don't remember. Oh, welcome to my personal rain cloud. I was never very good at math, since I have only three fingers in each hand. <laughs> uh, but I hear you don't actually need to know very much about math to complete these assignments. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> that was a nice little programmer joke. For each two things in the inbox, add them together and put the result in the outbox. You have a new command. It adds the contents of the tile on the floor to whatever you're currently holding in whoever you're currently holding. Alright. So we take inbox, we copy it to local memory there. We go to the inbox. We add from local memory. It adds the tiles to whatever I'm holding. Okay, then I send that to the outbox. And I jump. Alright, so... I said this was like programming. It's sort of... It is in the sense that this is actually assembly programming. Little Inferno. Yeah, that's the, that's the game. Did I do this right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this looks correct. Nine, eight. This should come... The next one should come out zero, right? Yeah. Okay, there's negative eight. Yeah, okay, so this came out perfectly. Yeah, so... This is um, assembly programming. And... This is sort of like, actually like, the way your computer thinks. It is It gets down to like this sort of level of just like, I load thing into memory, I get thing from memory, I add two things from memory together. So what I'm holding is what's known as a register, and then you can, you usually can only hold, you can usually only add registers together, so it would be m more appropriate if it was like, I was holding two objects in my hands and then smushed them together as opposed to copying from memory first. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Who are you? This optional error is for high performing employees only. Is that you? Yes, well, you're late. Seven years late. <laughs> we need to make some changes around here. I want to see a 100% performance increase. From this point onward, your performance will be evaluated with extra scrutiny. For each thing in the inbox, triplet, and outbox the results. Well, where are we going with this? Please leave the high level decisions to management. Okay. Well, anyway. So, uh, what we do is we take this object from memory, from the data stream, 
We're going to copy it to memory, and then we're going to just perform add three times. That should do it, right? And then we send it to Outbox. And if I wanted to, instead of, well, no, I have to do it a certain way because I can't, I don't have guards on my loop statements yet. I can only do jump statements. All right, so let's do it. Ah, bird in chat. Science. Yes, engineering. <laughs> cool. Yeah, if I could, uh, this is what's known as an unconditional jump. So I can't uh, evaluate it and say like, oh, if I, uh, if I do three, if I do this three times, then we stop jumping. Like I don't have that capability. So this is how to do it, right? So I copy two. I did that too many times. Uh, so we need to remove one of these add statements. All right, that did it. Six, fifteen, zero. All right, perfect. <laughs> Trust me that that worked perfectly, considering I now have people saying yay and stuff like that. I used six commands, so I did... Aha! I did the optimal solution. Correct! These challenges can be very difficult, and in many cases not possible to optimize both simultaneously with one solution. Okay, good to know. Well, I did it, so fuck you, game. Cool, let's go ahead and see. This is... I did not complete this one in the optimum amount of something or other. Looks like I didn't even unlock the ability to optimize these yet. Let's go back here and see what this is all about. <laughs> what is it? What is it saying that I didn't do? So if I run it again, I'll just run the program again and see what it says if I didn't do or the ways I can optimize this one. I did not use six or fewer commands. I used nine, and I completed it in nine steps. Let's see. I wonder if I can do this a little bit better. If I copy from... If I do looping... Let's see, how do I do this? If I do inbox, get V, send it to outbox. Oh! Yeah. Can I do it this way? If I just copy straight from local memory, I'm copying, I'm copying constants. This way I don't have to co I don't have to write over, write over memory. I can just pick up everything directly. So I pick up B, just straight up, then I pick up U. And then I just pick up G, and I throw it on there. And I don't have to even bother with the data stream. Cool. So, that corresponded to con to constants in assembly code, and yeah. We're just along for the ride, trust me. <laughs> it's see.